Elijah has this confrontation with Ahab. And he tells him, he makes that pronouncement, God's word said there shall be no dew nor rain. And then Ahab goes home. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> he goes home to Jezebel. And Jezebel was having a while of a time with the prophets of Baal and all the, the, the pagans that she brought with her into the palace. And he goes up to Jezebel. She's probably sitting having a while of a time laughing and joking. And, and, and he comes in, I have, and uh, says, um, sugar plum. <laughs> Guess what? I met this politically incorrect Yahoo bigoted prophet whom I just know as Elijah, and he said to me that there will be no dew, no rain for the next three and a half years. And so they start laughing. <laughs> what is this Yahoo? Who does this Yahoo think he is? But when they finish laughing, they said, Opsa daisy. <laughs> What if he's right? What if he's right? And so, they want to kill him. They did not know that it was God who's speaking. They want to kill him. They think, well, if we kill him, we'll get rid of him. That prophecy will not come to pass. <laughs> All I want to say is lots of luck. I remember back in 1989, I'll never forget it, I was with a group of clergy, and they were sitting there, and I was standing, standing up there. We're sitting in a, in a circle, and, uh, and they were making fun of me. I mean, literally, really, really were having fun and laughing heartily, not behind my back, in front of me, <laughs> because of my faith in the Word of God. And I, I mean, I, I was mesmerized, I must confess to you. I, I've never really took an offense I, I still to this day consider it a badge of honor. And so the king puts out an all search bulletin, all search message, all the police, all the federal police, everybody. Find me this unsophisticated, politically incorrect Yahoo by the name of Elijah. He happened to believe the word of God. And he happened to announce the Word of God without hesitation, without modifying it, without watering it down. Ah. But where was Elijah? Where was he? Have you heard of the Federal Protection Program? <laughs> Have you heard of that? Well, God has one. It's called the Global Protection Program. <laughs> and that's where he was. After he made the announcement, thus says the Lord, God hides him. Now, hear me right. Please listen carefully. Because I want you to know when God really hides you, he hides you in plain view. When God protects you, he protects you in plain view. When God shelters you, He shelters you in plain view. When God is shielding you, He's shielding you in plain view. Listen to me, listen to me. <laughs> now, God is the one who's hiding Elijah. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Michael. Just wait a minute, wait a minute. You mean God calls him to public ministry, and He calls him to announce to the king this great announcement, great pronouncement, and then he hides him? Does this make sense to you? It doesn't to me. Yeah. Listen, your hiding place, your hiding place, your hiding place is always God's protection of you for greater service. Often God hides his servants 
And often to the servant, that hiding place is puzzling. That hiding place is, 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 to say the least, is very puzzling. God hid Joseph in part of his house, then in the prison. Why? For greater service. God hid Moses for 40 years in Midian. Why? For greater service. Uh, God hid Esther in the king's palace. Why? For much greater service. Our Lord Jesus Christ himself was hid in Nazareth for 30 years. Why? For far greater service. The Apostle Paul himself, after a confrontation, after an encounter with the risen Christ on the road to Damascus, he was hidden from, from view in northern Arabia. Why? For far greater service. Some of you right now probably feel you're in a hiding place, and you're puzzled, and you're puzzled. I think of a mother with small children up to her elbows and diapers, and, 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 and she feels hidden. Remember, it's for greater purpose. Some of you and those who will be watching online may be shut-ins right now, and you're watching and you're listening, and you feel you're hidden, but it's for greater purpose. Some of you feel that you are being hid and hidden in your job and you're puzzled and you're asking why. God is hiding you there for greater purpose. Some single people who want to get married feel hidden in the sight of God, and you're sitting there in your, your, your brook of Kareth or Kareth brook, and then you're saying, why? He's hiding you there for greater purpose. Some of you are in a certain place in your business, in your business, and where you feel hidden, and you're not able to see your way out of the trouble, out of the problems, and you're working hard, and you're working diligently, and you're asking, Why? You're hidden there for greater purpose, greater purpose. God hid Elijah after one of the great pronouncements, one of the great pronouncements to, to one of the powerful people in the world at the time. And he was hidden. Let me hasten to say, as a man who felt hidden for 10 years. 10 years, I felt completely hidden. I know firsthand how frustrating that is. I know firsthand how frustrating those times are. I, I, I know firsthand how perplexing those hiding times are. Being hidden feels purposeless at times. It really does. But thank God I lived long enough that I can look back and I say, thank you, God, for that hidden place. Thank you for that hiding place. Thank you for, say it with me, thank you for that hiding place. Thank you for hiding me, Lord. It was for God's greater purpose. If you've never been in one of God's global hiding programs. If you've never been in God's hiding places, I want you to remember this. I want you to remember this. God sends you there for a purpose so that he can use you far more than you can ever imagine. You might not be there now, some of you younger people, you may be there a few years from now, maybe after the Lord has taken me home. I want you to remember, you know that uh, preacher over there in the Church of the Apostles, he's dead now, he's in, you know, the late Michael Youssef. <laughs> I want you to remember that. That's why I want you to write it down. So when you find yourself in that hiding place, regardless of what time, that you remember that he has kept you in that hiding place for a purpose. I personally believe 
that God wants every one of his servants to be and to have the Kareth Brook uh, or Kareth Ravine, some word, Brook or Ravine. I really believe God wants you to have that experience. He wants every one of his children whom he will use mightily to be in that place. Why? Because only in your Kareth Ravine will he work his purpose out in you. Before he can use you, he wants to work on you. There at your Kareth Ravine, God both working inwardly and outwardly. There you'll find that no one else to understand you. There you'll find no book to motivate you. There you'll find no friend to cheer you up. And Elijah was at the bottom. It was at the bottom of that ravine. In fact, I know east of the Jordan, I know that place is very, very desolate. It's a desolate place. There was nothing but rocks, trees, and dripping water. But listen to me. When you're there, don't underestimate those three things. Because the rocks are going to help you and remind you to lean on the rock of ages. The trees are going to remind you of what the psalmist said. The tree that's planted by the living waters. And I know that the dripping of the water (laughs) will remind you of what Jesus said, that out of the innermost will flow rivers of water. And so please, 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 please be encouraged if you are at Kareth Ravine right now. But then, but then God works inwardly when you are at your Kareth Ravine. He works outwardly, but he works inwardly. Verse 1 again, look at it. It says, Elijah the Tishabite. That's it. Elijah the Tishabite. If you go down to verse 24, which we will see in the next message, he goes down to verse 24. You see the widow of Zarephath. You know what she calls him? The man of God. See, the Kareth Ravine transformed Elijah from just being Elijah the Tishabite to being the man of God. God did something inwardly in Elijah's life, and God will always do something inwardly when you are in his global protection program. What is he doing in Elijah? Listen to me very carefully. He was peeling. He was peeling these layers. Some of you know what I'm talking about. In fact, most of you probably do. I know what I'm talking about. You know, these layers, he keeps removing them until he gets Elijah to get to the real Elijah. Some of you are resisting the removing of these layers, and you want to keep them on, and you're holding on to them. And I know it's not a pretty picture. Some of you might be trying to hold on to these layers that God is peeling off in order to get you to the point of being the real you, not the projection of you, not the perception of you, not the public you, not the outward you, no, the real you. I read about this young man, young businessman who was struggling in his business, and he decided to go and for two two days a retreat in one of the monasteries. And he goes to that monastery and and he's just quiet for a while and then he starts talking to the monks and he found an old wise monk. And he walked up to him and he said, "Uh, do you all wrestle with the devil here? And the monk said, no, 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 no. We don't wrestle with the devil here. He said, what do you do? He said, we wrestle with God. Young man said, what? Uh, wrestle with God? I, I, are you expecting to win? And the man said, no. We wrestle with God so we lose. So that we may lose. Just like Jacob wrestled with God in the valley of Jabbok until he lost. 
Elijah wrestled with God until he lost. Only then, only then can he be prepared to do what he did, as we're going to be seeing throughout the series of messages, some of the most amazing confrontations, the most amazing ministry that any man could have. And that's when he went from Elijah the Tishabite to Elijah the man of God. Don't resist. Don't resist the layers removal. God really wants to bless you. Elijah's hiding place was not only perplexing, Elijah's hiding place was not only purposeful, but it's also a place of provision. Look with me again. Whenever and wherever God hides you, you can be sure of his provision. I want to repeat this. Wherever, whenever God hides you, you can be absolutely sure of God's provision. God arranged for Elijah to eat through the most unbelievable, unimaginable catering service. Look at the text. See, part of the provision was natural. The other part was supernatural. I'm going to explain that to you. God said to him, verse 4, he said, you will drink from the brook. You will drink from that ravine. That is natural. That is natural. But then, here's the supernatural part of the provision. God commanded the ravens to feed him. That is very supernatural. I'm going to tell you why. I grew up in the Middle East, as you can imagine, right? I mean, you haven't guessed that I'm a sunburned Swede. Uh, and, 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 and getting, growing up in the Middle East, I know all about ravens. I know all of, I, I, I can tell you more about ravens than you really want to know. Ravens are unbelievable birds. I used to watch them every day. They eat everything in sight, and they will snatch it and run with it, and more. They will eat, they will, they will grab everything in sight. In fact, they were known to starve the young uns in order to feed themselves. They're vultures. And yet, God said to them, you're going to be the catering service <laughs> for my man, Elijah. He is in my hiding program, and you're going to take food for him. When you are in God's hiding program, you can be absolutely sure of his provision. And I thank God that I can raise my hand and testify to that fact. When you are in God's protection program, he can use some mean, angry, godless people to serve his purpose in your life. When you are in God's protection program, he will use the most unusual catering service for his provision for you. I've been there, and I know some of you have. But don't miss verse 7. Look at verse 7 with me, please. I'm just going to whet your appetite for next message. Verse 7, after a while, the brook dried up <laughs> because of the lack of rain. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Elijah had just become a victim of his own prophecy. <laughs> Have you ever suffered simply because you are at the very center of the will of God? Now, I'm not talking about, you know, you did something wrong and you received punishment or whatever. No, no, no. I'm talking about actually suffering because you sought with all your heart to be at the very center of the will of God. I can't wait to tell you all about this in the next message. But, beloved, 
all kinds of brooks dry up for all of us. They really do for all of us. Business brooks dry up. Health brooks dry up. Academic brooks dry up. Ministry brooks dry up. The question is, what is God doing when the brooks dry up? What is he doing? I'm getting ready to shout because I know what I'm going to say. <laughs> I really am. I'm getting ready to shout, and I did. <laughs> it's because God is saying to you, I am planning greater things for you. I am planning better things for you. I am planning to take you up a higher level of faith and a higher degree of trusting me. The question is, are you willing to trust him? Are you willing to trust him? Will you pray with me? Precious Heavenly Father, it never ceases to amaze me. It never ceases to amaze me. And all the years I've been walking with you, your amazing, visible hand working in your children. And I pray to God that I would never cease to be amazed until I am in awe of your presence in heaven. Father, I pray for that person who's here or watching, who is in a state of puzzlement, and he sees or she sees where they are is purposeless. Show them that your hand is working even in their hiding place. Father, I pray for that person who is experiencing frustration and calling on you and thinking that you're not really answering them. Assure them afresh of your working things out according to your perfect will in their lives. And Father, Father above all, as we see your day of return, Lord Jesus, draw nigh, and as we see the beginning of the separation between the sheep and the goats, I pray in the name of Jesus, give us the strength, give us the, the st st stick to -vility, that we would stick with you, that we would never give up, that we would never be in discouraged that we will know that there is a God in Zion and that he has a plan for my life and he will use me. Father, strengthen the remnant until we see you face to face. For I pray this in Jesus' name. All of God's people said amen.